Good evening and welcome to, the, to today's thrilling Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth and I'm Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is President of Roots Magic and its author. And today's topic is creating custom reports with Roots Magic. While most everybody uses Roots Magic's built-in charts and reports, Far fewer people have learned to harness the power of a custom reports feature. And sometimes you may be looking for a very specific report or list customized to your taste and needs. And that's where Roots Magic's custom reports feature comes in. So uh, today we'll learn how to use this feature to make new reports that are all your own. So as Mike mentioned, uh, Roots Magic has hundreds of different reports. Uh, most of those are hardwired to do a certain thing. But sometimes uh, there may be a list, a particular list that you would like that's not built in. And so we're going to show you how to do that, how to create your own custom lists, your custom reports, uh, using the custom report feature in Roots Magic. Now, there is one little caveat with custom reports, and that is that while you are able to select what fields you want to print and more or less where you want them to print on the screen uh, and what people you want to include and so on, there are some limitations. For example, you will not be able to duplicate something that looks like a pedigree chart with the custom reports. You won't be able to create something necessarily that looks like a family group sheet using the custom reports. The custom reports are going to be a list of people along with the information about those people. What you can do is choose kind of the overall layout of how that list of people is sorted, what information prints for each of those people, which people get printed, and so on. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, to create a custom report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the report button and I can also go up here to the reports menu either one and bring up the list of reports that I have to select from and the custom reports are going to be in the reports category and when I select the reports category I have two options I can print blank reports or I can select custom reports now I can create as many custom reports as I want and as I create custom reports, you'll see the ones that you create right here in the list. I notice there is a question about moving custom reports between databases. Currently, that is not possible. Your custom reports are stored with the database that you created it for. The reason for that is that the custom report is designed to use fields, uh, including user-defined fact types that you may have, and the group of people that are in that particular database. So it wouldn't always work for you to have a custom report that you created for one database and then try to use it for another database. This is an area we are looking at to see if there's a way to be able to let you share uh, custom reports between databases in the future, uh, taking that kind of thing into account. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come up here and I want to create a new custom report. I don't have any selected yet. I have not haven't created any. So I'm going to come up here and create a new custom report. And Roots Magic is going to bring up what's called the custom report designer. Now, don't let this intimidate you. It's very easy to create a custom report. Um, but there are a lot of features in this custom report designer that are going to let you do some really flexible things. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with a, a, simple, uh, a simple custom report and from that simple custom report expand out to more and more capabilities. So let's just go ahead and start with a very simple one. I'm going to create uh, a list that just has three columns. It has the person's name, their birth date, and their birthplace. So the first thing I want to do as you'll notice, in this area where I am going to lay out what my custom report looks like, I have a header row and I have row one. That's a data row. The header row 
is going to be the text that prints at the top of each page. So if I have columns, that's going to be my column headers. It's going to print at the top of each page. So you'll notice that the cell type by default is text for a header. It does not make sense to put data fields into the header. So I'm going to go ahead and select column one. And as I mentioned, I'm going to have in the first column, I'm going to have the person's name. So I'm just going to type the word name. And now I just have name there. The second column, I'm going to put the person's birth date. So I can put birth date. Now, I want to put the birthplace as a third column, but you'll notice I don't have three columns to select from. Roots Magic only gives you two to start with. That's where these options up here become important. Now, you can come up here and choose options from the menus, or you can just use the little menu, the little toolbar buttons, and that's where I'm going to actually choose these from. But you can pick whichever way you want. You notice when I hover over one, it's going to show you. If I click this button, it's going to insert a column to the right of the cursor. In other words, that little blue highlighting that says birth date. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to add that third column to the right of that. So I'm going to come over here in that header, and I'm going to type in birthplace. Now, all I've done so far is put in plain old text. You'll notice if I want to change that, I can highlight one, and I can come up here and I can change it. So if I wanted this to say person's name instead of just name, I can do that. I can just change that text to whatever I want. Now, the next thing I want to do is tell Roots Magic what to print for each person that I select. Okay? Now you'll notice when I highlight uh, a cell in, or, or a piece of information here, I can choose for this cell type to either be a field or a text. Okay? When we did the header, we did just text because we just want that plain old text, that same text over and over to be printed at the top of each page. In this case, I want the first column to be the person's name. So it's going to be a field, and I'm going to select the field. And there's going to be a bunch of items to choose from, and I can just start typing to get to what I want. But I'm going to come down here to name. And you'll see that there's several different options for name. And I'm going to pick name where it does the surname first, surname comma given. I can choose given surname, and I can have the prefix or suffix included if I want. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use surname and given. And you'll notice Roots Magic has put that into that cell. You'll also notice that that field, the text is blue. The reason it's blue is because that's a field. Whereas this is text in that header, that means it's going to write the words person's name. When it's a field, it's going to actually put the name of that person, their surname, comma, and then their given name in for each person that I choose in this report. So I'm going to go ahead, and now I want to enter the birth date. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to choose birth date. Then I'm going to go to birthplace, and I'm going to do the same thing, birthplace. Now you'll notice you can also include things like notes and details, and we're going to come back to some of those items later. So I've created a very, very simple custom report right here that's going to have three columns, the person's name, birth date, and birthplace. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Roots Magic asks me for a name for this custom report so that I can reuse it over and over. So I'm going to call this My Birth List. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It is now one of my available reports. The second thing I can do is choose which people I want to include in this report. And for now, I'm going to choose everyone. We'll come back and show, uh, show how to actually select only certain people later on. So I'm going to tell it to generate the report. And here is our report. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Okay. You'll notice that I have person's name, birth date, and birthplace. That's the text in the header. That's what I said I wanted to print over and over at the top of each page. So as I go to the next page, you'll see person's name, birth date, birthplace. That's what the header is, the text that prints at the top of each one of these columns. 
then Roots Magic for each I, each person that I tell it to print, it's going to print the person's name, surname, comma, given name. Then it's going to print their birth date. Then it's going to print their birthplace. So I can scroll down and I can see how that's going to look. Okay, so that's a very very simple uh, little little uh, custom report. Now there's some other things I can do. For example. I may notice right here that that birth date field or column does not need to have all of this extra space. You'll notice that some of these places as they're longer end up wrapping. So I'd actually like to make that birth date field a little bit smaller. So I can go back up into the settings, edit this, this uh, custom report again, and narrow that birth date field down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Tell it to generate the report, and there's my report. The birth date is taking up less space. The column is not quite as wide. And so I can go in and adjust those columns. You'll notice when I do that that actually what is actually changing for each of these reports, as I adjust this, it's changing the width. Okay, it's changing that width to a percentage. So these columns are going to be some percentage of 100%. The reason it does it this way, rather than saying 3 inches, 5 inches, or whatever, the reason it's using a percent is because you, individual users may use a different size of paper. Okay, in the U.S., we'll use 8.5 by 11. In European countries, they will use a different size of paper. The other option is you may want to go in and say, I want to print this in uh, landscape mode. In other words, I want to print it going the wide way across the paper. So instead of being 8 inches across, I want it to print at the 11 inches across, going the, going the landscape. And by doing the percentage, it will be basically make this custom report expand to fill the necessary space. Okay, so now one thing you might also have noticed when we went into here and did this report is that it sorted this report by name. You'll notice that it's got the last name, comma, given name. Uh, that's the way it's sorting that. But I can actually go in and change the order that this report sorts in as well. So I'm going to go back into the settings. And I'm going to edit this report again. And right here under Options, there's a number of things I can do. The first thing I can do is actually change the report title. Okay, the report, if you, I don't know if you noticed it, but there was no title at the top of the paper, uh, at the top of the page. So I'm going to put my cool birth list. And that's going to make that title print at the top of each page. Now you'll also notice this is where we're getting our sort order. It's sorting that list by surname, then by given names, and you actually have a third sort option if you need that. So I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to say I want to sort this by birth date. Okay, and then for the second sort, I'll just leave it blank. I don't need, I don't want to sort it by anything. So I'm telling it exact same data. Same people, same column, same everything, except sort it by birth date. So, of course, the people who have no birth date are going to be sorted at the top. That's, that's what these quotes are. And then it's sorting it by the birth date, 1631, 1635, and so on. As I scroll down, you'll see that it has sorted my birth list, my cool birth list, by the birth date. That right there is a very simple, uh, simple list. Actually, I can go into custom report. If I want to go in, I can also say sort this instead of by birth date. I can say sort this by birthplace. And when I sort this by birthplace, there are my birthplaces. I've sorted this database by the birthplace. Okay, so I can sort I can sort on any of these columns. Okay, let's go ahead and hop out. Okay, because what we've done, we've created a nice simple list. Okay, which which in, in, in and of itself is not necessarily completely useful here. But I'm going to show you now 
how to do a little bit more formatting, a little bit fancier formatting. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a new report. And I'm going to, under the header, I'm actually going to leave the header blank. You don't have to actually enter a header. You don't have to have text at the top. We're going to get a little bit fancier. So I'm going to come down here to row one, and I'm going to choose name again. And I'm going to go ahead and pick surname, comma, given again. I'm going to select the name. Now what I'm going to do is I want additional rows. What we did in that original custom report is we, uh, we, we took one row and we had a name column, a birth date column, and a birthplace column. I'm actually going to get a little fancy here, and I want another row. Well, if you remember, I could actually click to add another column to the right of the cursor, but I can also add another row below the cursor. So now I have another row, and I can just click that several times. And I'm going to actually, I want two rows down there because there's a couple of things I'm going to do. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create a report that has the person's name, and then underneath that has their birth date in place and their death date in place. Okay, I'm not interested necessarily in just columns, I, although there will be columns involved. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want this row to be the birth, and so I'm actually going to, instead of doing a field, I'm going to do text. Now, as I mentioned, it doesn't really make sense to put fields in the header, but it can be useful to put text in the body. And so I'm going to put text, and I'm going to write the word born with a, with a colon. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do text again, and I'm going to put died with a colon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to enter the birth date, which is one of those things we wanted. And then underneath that, I'm going to enter the death date. Now, at this point, I also wanted the places, if you remember. So I am going to add another column to the right. And I'm going to enter the birthplace. And I'm going to enter the death. All right, where's the death place? There it is. And I'm going to also enter the death place. Now, again, I'm going to make this column a, a little bit narrower so that that date does not take up all the room. Now, I would actually like this date field to be butted up right against born, the born and died text. Because what I actually want this to look like is to have it put the name and then the birth, say born, and then the birth date, and then the birthplace, died, death date, and death place. So I'm happy with how this is looking so far. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to put my second list. And I'm going to choose, when I'm going to print this report, I'm going to choose my second list, and I'm going to generate the report. OK, what you're going to notice is something really horrible looking. OK, you'll notice that the born and the died have the date to the right and the place. That looks really good. That's what I wanted. The problem is, look at the names. The names are mangled in that first column because they are stuck in the same column as born and died. I remember I made that narrower, so they're stuck in there. So here's what you do about that. You go back in, and you edit that report, and you'll see right here, here's the problem. Name is having to squeeze in that little column and wrap around. What I'd like is for name to go ahead and just continue all the way across all of those columns. I don't have anything printing in here or here. So what I can do is I can click my mouse, and while I'm holding my mouse button down, drag it and highlight all of those cells in that row. And there's a button right here called Merge the Selected Cells. When I click on that, what you'll see as I move down here is I don't have separate columns. When I move here, I do have separate columns, but when I move up to here, those columns have all been merged, so that name is going to fill the entire row. It's not going to be having to wrap around in that one little column. I'm going to tell it OK, 
We choose that list, generate the report, and there we have it. We have the person's name. Underneath that we have born and died, and then the name born and died. So this is going to give us the name stretching all the way across. Now, the next thing we might notice is it's kind of crowded in that we have the person's name born and died and immediately goes right into the, uh, the person's name. So we might like to actually have a blank row between each of these so that the person's name and birth and death information are in little groups. And so I can do that by going back into the settings again, editing that list, and going up here into options. And when we were in the options, you remember we had the report title and how we wanted it sorted. But there's an option right here, blank rows between records. By default, that's going to be zero, which means I don't want any blank rows between records. I want each record to start right after the other. But in this case, I'm going to say I want one blank row between records. I want it to print a person and his information, whatever I told it, then print a blank row, then do the next person. So by making that one little change and going in here and generating this report, I now have my information grouped. So as I go down there, you'll see I actually have my information grouped here. Okay, so now let's get even a little bit fancier. So far what we've added, so far what we've added here is basically fields, individual fields, single pieces of information. We've added names, we've added dates and places. What I want to do is I want to add some notes. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select a cell here in row two. I want to print birth notes. And I want those birth notes to come right after this, this birth, birth date and birthplace. Now, there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can either add a fourth column out here. So I could come right here and I could add a column four and print the note out to the right of that. Or I could say I want to have the birth note underneath this. So let's go ahead and do that first. We can come back and try the other one later if we want. But one of the things that's really nice is you can experiment with different types of things and, and see what you like and what you don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to add another row below the cursor. And I'm going to come to this cell. I want to leave born and died kind of sticking out by themselves. So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to say I want the birth note. Okay, so I'm going to print that birth note right there. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to select that. Again, I'm printing everyone. Now I'm going to tell it to generate that report. And what you'll see is as I go down through here, you'll see that it's actually throwing. Let's find somebody that's got a birth note. As I go down here a ways. Okay, here's somebody with a birth note. We have their name, we have born, and we have the birth date and the birthplace, and then we have that note. But we still have that same problem like we had before with the name in that it is wrapping that note in that date column. So how do we fix that? We go back into settings, we edit that, and we say we want those two columns merged together. So now when it prints that birth note, it's not limited to having to wrap just in that date field. It actually has the date field and the place field to work with. So when we come back to here and generate the report, and we scroll down to the bottom where that note was, there we go. We have the person's name, the birth, there's a date and place, and then the birth note underneath that. Okay. Now, rather than having to dig through all of these people, trying to find those people that have that birth note, Let's move on to one of the other great features in custom reports, and that is selecting who we want to include in this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose this report. In other words, so that if I click Generate Report, that my second list is a report it's going to generate. But I'm going to choose which people I want to include. So now I don't want to include everybody. So I want to select people from a list. When I do that, Roots Magic brings up a list of everybody in my file, and I can go and select the people I want. 
Now, I could do this the hard way and just go down here and just check people off, but that's not what I want. I want to mark a group of these people. And I could mark and say, I just want to print that report for just the family of the highlighted person, or for everyone in their tree, or for just their ancestors, or for just their descendants. So this is where I'm going to get to pick which people are included in this custom report. Now, the one I want to do is select people by data fields. This is a very, very powerful uh, capability. You can select people by almost anything you can possibly think of. Let's go ahead and do that. Don't be intimidated by this little screen. All you're doing is you're going to say which people you want to, it to include. So I can select a field, and I'm going to go ahead and choose birth. Now, I can choose things like names or any events, including events I've created myself. If I've created user-defined events, those are in there as well for me to select from. But in this case, I'm going to select birth because I want to find people whose birth, and then am I interested in their birth date? No, what I actually want is people who have a birth note. But as you can see, I can pick people based on their birth date equals something, or is before some date, or is after some date. Or I can say everybody whose birth place equals this, or contains this, or is after this. I can find everybody who has place details, or notes, or sources, or age. I can say everybody whose birth age is greater than 10. Okay, that's going to give me nobody. Everybody's birth age is zero. But in facts like death and occupation and things like that, that age field becomes very powerful. I want to do birth note. So I'm going to say I want everybody whose birth note is not blank. Okay, that's how simple it is. I could come over here and say and or this and or this and or this. And I can get as fancy as I want. But I just want... All I want is a list of the people who have something in their birth. Their birth note is not blank. So I'm going to click OK. There were three people. And if I click OK, if I scroll down here, you'll see, as I scroll down, you'll see there's one person, and there'll be two others in here who will have checks next to their name. Those are the people whose birth, play, birth notes are not blank. Click OK and generate the report. And there's my report. I have the person's name, I have their birth date and birth place, and I have their birth note, and then their death date and death place. Now, I could actually go and add a death note underneath the death, the death date and death place as well, and in that criteria, I could say anybody whose birth note is not blank or whose death note is not blank, and that way I'll get everybody who has either a birth note or a death note. Okay, so that's that's an, kind of an overview um, of how to do of how to select people based on a particular criteria, and also include notes. Now, let's say let's say I want that that to, want that report to look a little bit different. So instead of having the birth note underneath this birth event, I could come right here and I could say I want to delete this current row. So that deletes that row, goes back to the way we had it. And I could come back in here and add a column to the right. This is what we talked about, something we could do. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to choose that birth note, just like we did before. But instead of that birth note being underneath the birth event, I want that birth note to be out here to the right. Okay? So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and leave it selected so it's only printing the people with a birth note. And I'm going to scroll over here a little bit. And what you're going to see is you have that person's name, and then you have the birth note out there to the right. And unfortunately, that birth note has to finish before it gets to the next row. Okay, you see how it's word wrapping? If I come down here to James, it's having to print that birth note, but that birth note has to finish printing before it gets to that next birth row and death row. Okay, because here's what here's what we have. It's printing the person's name, then it's printing that birth note, but this cell has to finish printing everything that's in it before it moves on to this next row. So how do we fix that? The same way we did before. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, instead of selecting multiple cells across and merging them, I'm going to select multiple rows up and down and merge them. So now I have this whole field is the birth note. What that means is Roots Magic can print the person's name and it will start that birth note, but that birth note extends alongside of the born and death information. So this cell right here does not have to finish before it gets to these. So let's go ahead and click OK. We're going to select the same group. And there we go. We have the person's name, and it starts the note. But that note does not have to get to the end before the birth and death. So it allows the birth and death information to butt up against the name just like we want. Okay, so you can use you can use this this feature of being able to merge cells either horizontally or vertically or both to be able to be very flexible in how you want these custom reports laid out. You're not having to to limit yourself to uh, some horrible looking format just because uh, just because of um, the cells have to be printed before it gets on to the next thing. So if I come back into here, I can go back in. Again, I can edit that, and I can do make whatever changes I want right here. Okay, so that is an overview of kind of how you can go in and design the reports. Again, as I mentioned, I can highlight any cell and change what's in that cell right here. So once I've added something, I'm not limited to having it stay exactly what I did. If I wanted, instead of a birth note, if I wanted it to have death notes instead, I just come over there and I can change that to the death note. And that's all I have to do. Okay. Now, there's some other options here. If I want, if I want to change the name of this report, this custom report that I've created, I can click rename and I can give it a new name. So that, that basically is just going to to let me give my report a new name. The reason that that's really useful is if I happen to have this report, which as we showed you was a birth note, and I wanted a report that looked almost exactly like this except was a death note, I can highlight it and I can say copy. And that will ask me, ask me for a name for the copy and I can go death note report And that creates an exact copy of that report I just had. So then I can go into edit, select birth note, and change that to the death note and save it. And so now I have two reports that are almost exactly the same without having to go redesign those reports over and over and over. Okay. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a couple of other, uh, a couple of other things here. I'm going to create another new report, and I'm going to call this one. I'm going to in this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the person's name, and I'll go ahead and do the surname given. And the next column over, I am going to enter the census date, and I'm going to want a third column. So I'm going to go in here and add insert a third column to the right of the cursor. And I'm going to do census place. Now again, I'm going to narrow that census date column down a little bit. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing you this with census is what we've done so far is basically death, uh, birth and death kind of information. Most of the time, we're only going to have one birth date place, one death date place, uh, and so death date in place in our database. Sometimes we have a particular fact type, occupations, residences, census, where we may very easily have more than one of a particular fact type. So actually, let me go ahead and I'm going to put in the header. I'm going to put name, date, and place, and I'm just putting date in place rather than census date in place, 
because I'm going to go into the options and I'm going to call this my census report. And I'm going to go ahead and let it sort by the by the surname and the given name. I'm fine with that. Okay. Now, when I go to generate this, uh, this is going to be my census report so that I can reuse this report over and over. I'm going to choose my census report. And in this case, I'm going to, again, select from this list. But instead of instead of saying everybody whose birth note is not blank, I'm going to say everybody whose census exists is true. In other words, I only want people who have a census fact type. Okay, so in other words, I'm saying the census fact type exists is true. That basically exists can be true or false. So I can say everybody who has a census event or doesn't have a census event. In this case, I only want the people I've got a census event for. Click OK. It marked three people. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to generate this report. Now you'll notice in this report, um, what I have is I've got, I've got somebody that has a census event with no date or place uh, entered up here. But look at James Smith right here. James Smith actually has three census events, okay? 1910 in Salem, 1920 in Ames, and 1930 in Ames. Roots Magic, when you put a fact type in or a piece of information you're asking for, if there is more than one of that fact type, Roots Magic will list them all for you. So I don't have to go in here and edit this. I don't have to go in and put row one census date, census date, census date, census date. I don't have to add a bunch of fact types like census date and census place just to be able to handle people that have more than one. If there is more than one of this piece of information, Roots Magic will just put each one on a separate line. And so it's going to give me that ability to do that. Again, if I do, if I went in and did some sorting, uh, keep in mind, right now it's sorted by, by the person's name, keep in mind that if I do sort this, Roots Magic is going to keep all of the fact types for a person together. So it's not going to take James Smith's facts and scatter them in there. So in other words, if I sort this, it's not going to come out uh, Ames, then Ames, then Avon, then Provo, then Salem. It's going to come out Avon, then Provo, and then Salem. It's going to pick whichever the first place is. That's just a limitation to the way uh, sorting uh, it has to be done when you're having multiple facts in a single cell like that. So. Okay, so that's that's an overview uh, of how to do how do you how to go in and create custom reports, uh, how to uh, create multiple custom reports, how to copy, make copies, and rename them, and go in and edit them. There are other options, of course. You can go in and select the fonts that are going to be used in that report uh, for the different kinds of data, that the list text and the header. Uh, you can also go in and set the layout, what you want the margins to be, whether you want it to be in portrait or landscape. Uh, one last checkbox right here, include private facts. In Roots Magic, when you go into a person in Roots Magic, and let's go ahead and show that. When you go into a person in Roots Magic, when you highlight a fact type, every fact type is going to have a checkbox here called private. And that's where you can say, I've entered this fact type but I want it to be private. I don't really want it showing in reports. If I mark a fact type as private, when I go into that report, uh, that custom report, when I go in and do that custom report, if I say do not include private facts, any fact for a person that has been marked as private will not be included in that report. So. Anyways, that's that's a kind of uh, that's an overview. Uh, so, do we have any questions, Mike? Yeah. Um, while you're looking at there, the screen, we had a question about a person. They didn't want to put today's date on the report. So, how would you shut that off? Oh, okay. What that is is that's over here in the layout. In the layout, when you click on that layout button. As I mentioned, this is where you can do things like choose what size paper 
uh, and whether you want it portrait or landscape. Now that's really useful if you're printing a report that has a bunch of columns. The ones we did had just three columns for the most part, a name, a date, and a place. But you may want to create a report that has the person's name and then their birth date, birthplace, death date, death place in five columns straight across. So each one takes basically one row for each person instead of trying to do it on multiple rows like we did. That's where landscape comes in handy. If I choose landscape, it's going to print it sideways so that you have more room for those columns. But on this layout screen, in addition to margins and page size, you have this option right here called header and footer. And what this does is this lets you choose what is going to print at the top of each page or at the bottom of each page. When we were in that report designer, we had a place where, if you remember when we went into the options, where we could choose what text we wanted for the title. Okay? And when we did that, Roots Magic prints the title wherever the header or footer says to print that. So right here is the header and the footer. Uh, they work exactly the same, except one's at the top of the page and one's at the bottom. So we'll look at them. We'll just look at the header and just realize that footer works exactly the same. When I highlight header, I have an option whether or not I even want to print the header. If I don't print the header, then it's not going to print that line up at the top with the title or whatever. Nothing's going to print at the top. Uh, the second option is do I want to mirror the header on even pages. And what that means is you'll notice the header is divided into sections, the left, the center, and the right. And so I can choose what I want to print in each of those sections. So by, by default, left, the left section is always going to print the title. That's what that little square, the title in the square brackets. I can click this, and I can, there's several of these I can choose from, the title, the date, the page number, the total pages, or this file name. So since I have title, it's going to print the title, whatever I entered in that title field, in the left side of that header. Okay, when I go to the center, it's not printing anything in the center of the header, and in the right, it's printing the date. Now, for each of these, I can also choose what font and what size and everything. So if I hop out of here, let's go, let's go look at this report real fast. I'm going to generate that report. Okay, right now, you'll see I didn't enter a, a title, so I don't have a title, but I've got the date over there. So if I go up into settings, if I edit this report and go my title, okay, when I generate this report, there it is. On the left is my title in a larger, bolder font, and over on the right is the date. So I could go into settings, and I could select layout, Go into the header and footer, and in the right section, since that's where our date is, I can just come up here and remove that. And by taking date out, when I generate the report, there's my title. It's still in there, but when I go over here to the right, the date's not there. Now, as I mentioned, the footer works exactly the same. For the most part, usually the footer, usually what you're going to have is the page number. But there are some tricks you can do with that, like right now, it's just it's page number, so if I go to settings and go to the layout and then go into the footer, the left section has nothing, the right section has nothing, and the center section has page. And so that's why it's putting that page number. But if you remember, I could actually put page of, and there's one called total pages. So I could say page of total. That is going to, total is going to give me the total number of page numbers. And so what that's going to do when I scroll down here is that's going to give me page 1 of 21, page 2 of 21. 21 is the total number of pages in this report, so I could actually get that old, you know, this many, page number this of this many uh, in there as well. And like I say, you can go in and, and not only choose what data goes in there, you know, in that center section, you know, if I wanted, if I wanted the page number to be italicized, I can do that, and that page number will be italicized. I can pick what font, what size, and I can do any kind of customizing I want in terms of the header and the footer there. So, okay, um, any other We've questions? We've had several questions about once you generate a report, 
can you save that out to Excel or Word oh, right. or another program? Yeah, what you can do is when you generate a report, let's go ahead and pick a my birth list. When you generate a report here, let me shrink that down just a little bit. Okay, so I've got a report right here. I of course I, of course I can go print that. That's one of the you know the main reasons you create a report is to print that. I can also email this report. So if I want to send this report as an email to somebody, I can click that. But I can also click Save. Now when I click Save, um, you'll notice right here I have my options to save this as a rich text file uh, or a PDF. Those two basically, rich, uh, a rich text file, if I save this as a rich text file, it's going to allow me to open this report up in Word or a word processor so that it looks exactly like what I have. It's all formatted and everything. Acrobat PDF, again, it's going to give me a copy that I can send. Somebody can open it up and look at it and print it, and it will look exactly the same. They won't be able to really edit it like they could a rich text file. But this one right here, the text file, is the one that you actually want. Some reports, uh, like a narrative report, if you save that as a text file, it just is text. It word wraps text. In the custom reports, when you choose a text file, it sends it out as a delimited file so that you could open that up in a spreadsheet like Excel. Uh, one thing to be careful about, it's going to definitely work better if you go with a simple custom report where you basically do just columns. If you start getting really fancy like what I was doing, where you're merging cells and, and uh, you know having notes in there where it tries to wrap in cells, it will go out to the file, and you could open it in Excel, uh, but it's not going to look nearly as, uh, because of the fact that Roots Magic is going to try to make it so that, uh, so that Excel can handle it. Uh, it's not going to look particularly wonderful. But for, if, if what you're looking for is a way to just get uh, a person's information out, you know, their name and birth date, birthplace, death date, death place, marriage date, whatever, into a spreadsheet kind of format, then yes, you can do that by just clicking Save and then choosing the text file. Okay, I see a couple of options. I've seen several questions um, which are somewhat related, uh, and the, unfortunately the answer currently is no. Uh, can you make the report print cell borders? Uh, what about page breaks for new records? Um, alternating uh, white versus like a grayish background? Those are all features that we're working on. Those are features that will be coming, but those are not currently available. Uh, in other words, those formatting kind of options, those are not really in there right now. Uh, you could, as I mentioned, you could come up and click on Save and save it to a rich text file uh, or, or save it as, uh, to your spreadsheet and be able to apply some of, those, some of that formatting there. Okay, one question I saw pop up a couple times. When you're selecting the people to include in a report, do you have to keep selecting those people every time you generate the report? Is there a quicker way to do it? Okay, that's a good question. Um, and, and basically what, what they're asking is right here when you click on people to include, you have your option of everyone or select from a list. If I click on select from a list, Yes, I have to currently, in, right here, I would have to go in and mark them each time. But there is a shortcut. If there's a group of people that I do reports on quite often, what you can do is from the main screen, open up this little side list. If it's not already open, this little side panel. If it's not already open, go ahead and open that and choose this last tab. Okay, this, my default normally, what everybody sees is the index. But if you click this last tab, this is a feature called Named Groups. And what this lets you do is select a group of people and give it a name so you don't have to keep picking them over and over. So if I go ahead and click on Add, Edit, or Delete a Named Group, it, this is where I can create a named group. And I can create as many of these named groups as I want. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a new named group. Okay, here's that same screen that we were looking at before. It's exactly the same where we can go through and check it or we can go mark people. So we're going to mark people exactly the same way we would have for creating a custom group. So I'm going to go ahead and say mark a group, and I could say select people by their data fields. 
And when I do that, that brings up this, uh, this criteria screen. And I see a couple of questions along the lines of Civil War era ma males that fought in the war. Can I generate a report? The answer is yes, if you've been keeping track of that kind of information. You can go put in things like um, that the, their age at, 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 on such and such a date is greater than this or less than this, or they were born after this date and died uh, or born after this date and died before that date. Uh, you can do things like if you have created a fact type for wars or if you use the built-in military service. You know, you could come in here and you could say military service, and I could say the military event exists, and, and then say and the military note contains civil war or however, or the, or the military value contains civil war. So however, however you've entered your data, if you've entered data for that kind of information, yes, you can select information or select people based on any information that you've entered, whether it's a built-in fact type or one you've created yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually pick one. I'm going to pick one called uh, birth place contains and I'm going to go ahead and pick Iowa. So in other words, I'm saying I want to select everybody whose birthplace contains Iowa, everybody born in Iowa. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Roots Magic has marked 65 people. I hop out of there. I say OK. And Roots Magic is now asking me for a name for this group. And I'm going to put Born in Iowa. And again, I can have as many of these name groups as I want. So I can have served in the Civil War, uh, you know, served in the, in the Revolutionary War, however I want it. I can create as many of these groups as I want. I can also go in and select it and say edit it and add new people as I need to or remove people if I need to. I can go in and rename this group if I want or I can delete them. If I'm done using that group, I can go ahead and, and get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going back into the custom reports. I'm going to create a custom report and I'm going to go ahead and pick my birth list because that's the one that has, my, has the person's name, birth date, and birthplace. Now, when I select people to include, in addition to everyone and select from a list, any named groups that I've got created are going to show up in that list also. So I don't have to go in and pick Born in Iowa again. So I can go ahead and say Born in Iowa, generate the report, and there's my list with just the people that were born in Iowa. Okay, and so like I say, you can create as many of those named groups as you want. Um, Somebody asked about selecting the value in a fact. What is the value? The value is when you are, what that means is when you're editing a person, some fact types don't have a value. So like if, I add, if I'm editing the birth event, I have the date, the place, and then the place details, which is going to be like the street address or the hospital or the whatever. Some facts, though, like occupation, in addition to place and place details, have a field called the description or the value. And so that's what the value, when it says occupation value, what that means is the occupation description field. So if I had one, if I happen to have a military fact, it's going to have a description where I could say Civil War, Revolutionary War, uh, World War I, World War II, and I could actually have that in the description field. So I could say everybody, select everybody who's uh, military description contains civil war. Now that description doesn't have to be just the name of the war. It doesn't have to be just civil war. It could be um, served as a um, as a lieutenant in the uh, in, you know in the in the Revolutionary War or whatever. You you know you can do that, and that's what's nice about that about that criteria. That's what's nice about the criteria being able to say I want to select. being able to say, I want to select everybody whose place or, or value contains in addition to equals. If I say the birth value equals Civil War, then that's only going to pick the people whose 
description field for that actually has exactly the word Civil War, no more, no less. But if I say contains, that's going to give me everybody whose field, description field contains the word Civil War, even if it says something in Civil War or Civil War drummer boy or, or whatever. Contains is going to get the people who have that in that field, even if it contains other information as well. Okay, are there any other questions? Well, I see one question, can photos be added? The answer to that is also not yet. Uh, the, the, the two things you really can't add to have printed right now is going to be pictures and sources. Those are the two, they're actually the two hardest to actually get to fit in a custom report, but we are working on those. Okay, one, one question I also see, uh, if you create a group and you add new data, does it automatically update that group? The answer currently is no. Uh, when you create a named group, it is what's called a static group, which means that the, that group is going to contain whichever people uh, met that criteria at the time you created the group. You can go in and edit that group and add other people by hand if you want, or go into that group and just rerun the criteria to reselect them. But as you add uh, a new piece of information, so like if you've got a group called Born in Iowa, if I add a new person and I put a birth date that contains Iowa, that person is not automatically going to be put into that group. Um, that's what's called a dynamic group. In other words, that the group adjusts on the fly. Um, the biggest problem with that is just performance issues. And that is because when you have a group like what Roots Magic uses now, static groups, Roots Magic just keeps a list of the people that matched at the time. And so when you generate a report, it has a list of the people right there. With a, stat, with a dynamic group, which actually changes as you add information, Roots Magic, every time you run a custom report using that group, Roots Magic has to go out and look at every single person in the database again to check whether or not they now fit in that group. For small databases, that's not a big deal. For a big database, you can have a very, very long delay as the program would try to go in and do that. That being said, it's something we're looking at to give you an option of using either, but currently it's, it's a static group. So uh, when you create that group, it's going to include the people that match that criteria at the time you created it. Okay, can you create an index in a custom report? Currently, no. Um, we actually haven't ever had a request for that, but it's probably not a bad idea. That's probably something we could do fairly easily. So that's that's something we will look at ad adding. Um, can reports be color coded? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm seeing, see yeah, yeah, I'm, I've seen several people asking about color coding, and again, that's that's not something that's an option, but that's one um, that that we actually probably could add. Uh, it would obviously it would only color code the name field. If you use the name field, it would be we'd be able to uh, color code that. So that's something we can also look at as well. Okay, well, let's wrap this up then. Just a reminder: this webinar was recorded, and it will be available in the next few hours at rootsmagic.com/webinars. And you can go there to sign up for future webinars. We have uh, about one a week scheduled for this month. And also take a survey about future webinar topics that you'd like us to, to cover. And thank you very much for attending. And have fun creating those custom reports.